Welcome. You are watching Line Screw One. Well, hello, tubers. Hope you're doing well wherever you are in this crazy YouTube universe. We're doing something a little different, as we often do on my channel. Today, we're going to talk about how others just want to take your money on YouTube. I actually want you to make some money. It sounded like Jim Cramer from CNBC. <laughs> he has no idea. Kramer. I have talked to the heads of almost every single one of these firms in the last 72 hours, and he has no idea what it's like out there. Well, you got to take a lot of what he says with a grain of salt because uh, it's infotainment. That's the problem with YouTube. There's so many people that will give you crazy advice trying to pump and dump something, you know, cryptocurrency or a stock or God knows what, when uh, <laughs> you got to be skeptical and you got to be careful. Which is my advice to say, don't do whatever I'm doing. Um, make your own decisions. And in fact, uh, I would actually uh, discourage you from doing what I'm doing because uh, my risk tolerance could be a lot different. So talk to somebody you know and trust. But uh, yeah, as you guys all know, things are changing. A lot of uh, negative uh, problems coming in the economy. Real estate is... Uh, in the process of tanking all over the world, actually, in many uh, countries, including here in Metro Vancouver, and uh, a lot of fear and moaning. But I'm actually more bullish when things get, uh, <laughs> I'm bullish personally, when the stock market gets a little scary, because uh, I've never understood a good um, um, bullish market when everybody's making money you know the uh, when the tide comes in it raises all the boats <laughs> and I never understood um, what, what what's the term for it irrational exuberance <laughs> never understood it I understand why it happens I understand the psychological processes involved and there is a certain psychological component to um, investing in, in anything you, you, you got to believe first of all I guess in some level but uh, I don't know there's some great opportunities out there, and I'll tell you some of my holdings. You know, I won't, I'm not going to get into the mix of how I'm balancing it, but I'm literally in the process of building a balanced portfolio, and I've got a few, you know, short uh, derivative options uh, as uh, some hedges against uh, some things. Uh, I'm not really going to talk about that too much because uh, derivatives are highly risky. <laughs> They're basically contracts, not necessarily always backed with anything um, essential. But anyway, I'll tell you some of the things that I've been uh, buying. Um, you know, the popularity contest of Tesla, you know, everybody remembers just last year when Tesla was worth pretty much every other car manufacturing company combined, <laughs> which I thought was uh, nutty. <laughs> but I managed to buy into the dip. I got in at around 103, and I bought a little bit more as it went up. And today was a great day. I believe Tesla closed around 131.50. Now it's not a long-term hold for me, but until it establishes a nice new base, uh, I'm in it. Probably buy a little bit more. We'll see what happens. I'm I'm pretty confident that tomorrow there'll be a little bit of profit taking because it's um, it's done exceptionally well in the last week. So. You know, some people are going to probably take some of that money off the table. But the volume's up. That's a good sign. Um, we'll wait and see on that. Some of the other things that I've been buying, uh, just the other day, uh, after earnings reports, which were expected, at least in my mind, to be horrible, <laughs> I bought into one of the legacy media companies, uh, Chorus Entertainment, they own Global TV, one of the less woke TV networks. God forbid if the CBC was public, which it's not, <laughs> I would never invest in it. But uh, Chorus does return a dividend, and you know they're still making money, but they're not meeting expectations, which is expected. I mean, come on. There's so many uh, channels out there. There's so many other uh, options to watch with your eyeballs. There's only 24 hours in a day, and not everybody's watching those legacy TV networks or radio, for that matter. So, But they're still earning money, and the, the stock was at a really... Uh, uh, you know, it got really hammered over the last uh, year or so. 
So I saw some value there and bought in, and it's it's done all right for me. Definitely not a long-term hold, but um, we'll ride it out for a little bit. In terms of uh, more secure investments, you know, I do like dividends. Um, I've uh, thrown some money into a really old company that's involved in both the U.S. and Canada. That's uh, Canadian National Rail. They've been around for over 100 years, been publicly traded for several decades, long track record of uh, increased growth and um, stable dividend yield. So I like it. It's not a highly volatile stock, so that's a long-term hold for me. I'll be buying a little bit more as time goes by. And what else do we got on the table here? Oh, TELUS. Uh, I do like telecommunications. Everybody's got a cell phone. And here in Canada especially, um, they essentially have an uh, oligopoly where a small number of companies control the cell phone networks. And uh, Canadians pay one of the highest rates in the world for cell phone bills. And that's a fact. It's been that way for a long time. So rather than complain about my cell bill, Hey, going to buy a piece of the action, which I did. So I do have some uh, uh, stake in TELUS. That's uh, one of the bigger Canadian players in this country. What else do we got that I'm willing to talk about? Uh, I don't want to talk about the derivatives. Um, some of my... <laughs> That would be a long, strange conversation on why I'm doing that, but essentially a hedge. But uh, let me think here. What do we got? Oh, some American stocks. Uh, yes, uh, I do have some Bank of America. I'm not going to really be throwing a lot of money into banking stocks because we all know what's happening with uh, interest rates and whatnot. Now, banks tend to still make money even in bad times because... They obviously loan money off the spread, but there's going to be probably a lot of mortgage defaults, credit card defaults, and the like. But uh, I, I've got some faith in Bank of America to hold for a bit, and uh, I am looking at buying a small amount of some of the better performing Canadian bank stocks like perhaps TD or Royal Bank. But like I said, it's not going to be a, a major holding in my portfolio. Now, let's see what else off the top of my head. What do I got? Um, oh, yes. Uh, utilities. I do have some uh, Algonquin Power. That's a utility company. A lot of green energy, hydroelectric, things like that. Now, it's an interesting position there. Algonquin Power, they sell and generate power in uh, eastern Canada and northern United States. The stock has been hammered because they've had to make a reduction of 40% on their dividend. And, of course, that's reflected in their stock. And they're, uh, they're selling some of their assets to pay off debt, which is probably a good thing. But... I think a lot of investors priced that into the equation and, you know, I bought near the dip and I'm going to hold, uh, I'll take their small dividend. I'm not uh, looking to substantially increase my position, but I will definitely keep an eye on it and hold it because I, I think I'm in a safe position myself. Oh, and I do have some speculative uh, small cap growth. Uh, I'm not going to even mention this company because I do have personal involvement. It would be uh, uh, unethical for me to mention it, but I do have other holdings that I think are going to do quite well. But because, like I said, of my uh, involvement in the company, wouldn't be ethical for me to even mention the ticker price. But hey, I think uh, a small amount of um, speculative growth, small cap, eh, why not? Why not? I just wouldn't go crazy over it. Now, that's the funny thing about YouTube. You'll see people that'll put all their eggs into one basket, and if they win, they win big. If they lose, they lose big. So part of investing isn't just trying to get rich quick. That's often a really bad strategy. But, you know, you got to be in it for the long haul, and you got to have a mix of things. So over well, the next few weeks, you know, every probably three to four days, I'm buying more. I'm, I'm managing things, not selling anything, at least not yet. But um, yeah, I just think it's a great opportunity to buy. And I think psychologically, it's easier for me to value things when things are getting bad. 
And luckily we live in a world with so much data out there that you can uh, decipher and make your own decision on what suits your own personal investing strategy. But I will say this uh, right off the hop, that is something I've noticed um, between my American and Canadian friends. I typically like to trade in my TFSA, that's a tax-free savings account. It's something similar to what you Americans have, which is like an, a Roth IRA. Luckily, the TFSA is a lot more generous in its rules for what you can do and how you can actually grow a lot of money tax-free. Um, there's only a few uh, rules in place that you really have to worry about in terms of you, you can't uh, over invest uh, beyond your allotment that you get per year or your lifetime amount that's available and there is no tax on anything on pretty much all major stock markets around the world which is nice but but there is a 15 percent tax on uh, dividends that are outside canada for for you canadians but i'm noticing a lot of you americans you know that you're not using your full allotment like many canadians are you're not using your roth ira to its full advantage and that's a shame because it's a powerful tool now, I'm, I'm vaguely aware of some of the rules with uh, the Roth IRA. I mean, I don't have one because I'm not an American, but uh, your rules are a little more restrictive, but it's still a wonderful tool. And if you don't take advantage of it, um, you're missing out. You know, you, you just are. And when it comes to investing, if you're a very modest income person, there's so many applications out there that you can download and you can trade stocks with uh, little or even no commissions and so there's really no excuse and even if you're a very very small investor there is fractional share ownership available where if you can't for example let's say you wanted to buy tesla and it closed i believe at 131.50 today somewhere around there let's say you had an extra 50 dollars this week that you didn't spend at the grocery store well, there are companies that will sell you a fractional share of that, and at least you can get in if you want. I mean, there are issues with that, I do understand, um, but it's something, and you can at least participate. Now, I'm not pushing Tesla. Uh, it's not for everybody, and you got to make your own decisions on that, but I was just using it as an example. There's a lot of uh, major companies you can own fractional shares in. So just something to think about and uh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket and you might as well make a few bucks along the way because I got the biggest raise of my life just this month from uh, one of my pensions. I got 6.5% increase and that never happens. It's only because the inflation is so high. And if they're giving me 6.5%, what is the true inflation level? It's got to be way higher. So every dollar you got tucked away in your coffee can, it's worth less every month. So you might as well invest it and try to keep up with inflation. That's my thought. And uh, don't, don't be lured into what a bank might offer you, some guaranteed certificate of, an, of, a, of investment or a, a CD, I guess they'd call it, where they, uh, the return is still substantially lower than um, inflation. But if you're only comfortable with that, do it. Um, it's completely up to you. So I'm just uh, about to buy some groceries here and I figured I would um, share my thoughts and, and talk about something other than Carolyn. Let's give Carolyn a break today. <laughs> She's too busy complaining about me. Oh yeah, I guess I will have to do a video on her um, reporting me constantly. Uh, it's pathetic what she's been doing. But in the meantime, folks, um, consider positioning yourself to protect yourself. Uh, maybe make a few dollars, secure whatever money and assets you have as things get rough because 2023 is going to be a rough year for millions of people all around the world. So just my thoughts and um, what I've been doing. In the meantime, folks, stay safe. Keep your wheels on the ground. I'll talk to you soon. Over and over. I got you, I got you